Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Stacy, the proud owner of Bossy Glamworks Boutique. Today we are going to be having a Q&A. Uh, I've had several people that reached out to me with different questions and I've got answers to them and I just wanted to hop online and share what my uh, honest opinion is and answer those questions for you guys. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Okay, so we are just going to dive right into the Q&A session and hopefully, you know, if you're a new or aspiring boutique owner, you will take something from this. This is based on my opinion and what I've experienced and what I've seen and what has worked for me. So take what you will from this video. This is solely based on myself and my experiences and my honest opinion. Okay, so the first question I got is it okay to use photos of your items from your vendors? Let's answer that one. In my personal opinion, I feel like with branding, if you're just doing this for money and you're not really passionate about it, this is just like a side hustle for you, go for it. By all means, go for it. But if this is something that you really truly love to do, um, and you really want to build a brand, behind it i would say take your own pictures no you do not have to go out and hire a expensive photographer like i said in my previous video you know with your cell phone they have pretty good cameras on them just you know like hit them angles you know what i mean um get a friend or a family member to take pictures of you go outside try different creative areas you know you want to stand out with your brand it, it's and and i've seen um a couple of people use other photos from other boutiques and i will say do not do that because first of all that is grounds for a lawsuit there's a lawsuit like waiting to happen because i know if someone uses my pictures i'm suing your ass it's straight like that but that's not really fair for us to you know spend all of this time and this money you know to have our photographers take these photos and they edit the photos and we put them up on our site just for someone to come along and steal those pictures and put them on their website for their own personal gain. Like that's not cool and it's just flat out lazy. So if you're going to use uh, photos from your vendor, you first need to ask because I know a lot of them, some of them don't even really want you using their photos. But if you've purchased for, from them and you have a pre pretty good relationship with them, they'll allow you to do so. Um, I know we all have to start somewhere, but... I think, you know, the majority of us have, have a cell, has a cell phone, excuse me. Just take the pictures with your phone. Get you, you know, Amazon has really, really good, cool tripod cameras, um, excuse me, camera holders or the tripod things that you can put your cell phone up on and you can do the pictures yourself. They have remotes. You don't have to worry about anybody taking your pictures. If you, you know, you don't fool with people like that and you really just don't want to ask anybody to help you. I would strongly encourage you to try to get out there and take your own pictures. It, like I said, it's not cool to steal from other boutiques and take their photos. Um, do the work. I say do the work. But just starting out, you know, from vendors, if you have spent money with them, but you want to ask first, it's okay. I personally wouldn't, but it's okay. So I reached out to him and I asked, I said, you know what, hey, can I use your photos, you know, that you guys have online for my website? And because I had spent money with them, they had no problem at all with releasing the photos to me so I can start my plus size collection. But once I started my plus size collection with actual plus size models, I was able to take those pictures down and put the new ones up. So in some instances like that, I would say that, it, it you know, it's okay to do that but y'all don't don't steal pictures from you know someone else's website it's it's lazy it's wrong and it's just just don't do it okay so the next question i have is should i order clothing from overseas or should i order here in the united states uh from the fashion district la okay we're going to roll with that. Uh, I'm assuming they just want to know uh, if they can get their uh, 
clothes from China because maybe it's cheaper or if they should get it from a uh, distributor. My thing is this, if you price your clothes accordingly, there's enough meat on the bone for everybody to eat. Now, I personally order from a distributor. I get my clothes from uh, LA, California, that area. Um, if you wanna wait, I, I, I don't even really know the wait time to order something from overseas. I think it could be weeks. If you are wanting to wait on <laughs> your order to come in from China, knock yourself out. I personally would not. Like I said, if you price your clothes accordingly, you can still make a pretty decent profit if you're getting your clothes from the middleman. So I get my clothes from the middleman. I don't get anything directly from overseas because what will happen is, let's say I ordered six smalls, uh, four mediums, and four larges of a particular item, it could sell out. And then when I go back to get more, I got to wait a whole, you know, a whole nother 30 days for China or whoever the manufacturers to send me the dresses. So wouldn't it be better to go through the middleman and you would get your items a little bit sooner? I know if I order something from California on a Monday, I know for a fact I'm going to have my items Wednesday, Thursday. So it's it just depends. If you want to wait, that, that's completely fine. I personally don't do it and I wouldn't recommend it. It's your business, but that's my opinion. Third question, should I use fancy packaging or basic white packaging? To me, it's all about the customer experience. I know there are some people who use the plain white uh, poly mailers. I know Fashion Nova does. I think maybe they have their logo on the outside. I'm not sure. I haven't shopped with them in a long time. And I've shopped from popular boutiques and they have sent me, you know, all white poly mailers uh, packaging and my clothes are fine. I think at the end of the day, most customers are just going to throw it in the trash. So if you're trying to save on money, you know, trying to save money, um, just go with the white, you know, but put a, at least put a thank you card or something of some sort in there or, hey, come back and shop with us on your, you know, take 15% off your next purchase. Put something in there. Um, but, you know, you don't have to go with fancy packaging at all. However, I have my own poly mailers. Uh, in my opinion, it's all about the experience with the shopper. Like I said, you could go with completely plain poly mailers like this. This is fine. It, it's, it's, a, it's a choice. I'm going to make money regardless. If I send somebody something with this on it or this. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Or this. Um, the reason why I want my logo and social media information on here, you got to think of, think about it like this. You know, when you, UPS comes and gets your package or the postal service comes and pick up, picks up your package, it's going to pass through many hands and a lot of people are going to see this. So you never know whose hand this is going to go, who who's going to get this package before your actual customer gets the package. So on here, it has my logo, of course, and then it has my Instagram information and also my Facebook information as well. So if somebody's handling this package, like say there's a a male UPS worker, he's carrying this and he's like, huh, what's Bossy Glamworks? I know my wife does a lot of online shopping. She's <laughs> sorry. She, she shops a lot. And he could like take a picture of this and put it in his phone and he goes directly to my website, excuse me, my Instagram or my Facebook, which links to my website. And I got a new customer. Boom. Just like that. This is like free advertising. Yes, you are going to pay more, but you know, that's the cost of the game. So it, it's, it's really up to you. I also have these smaller ones. This is for something like, um, a, a spandex dress or something real small that I can just throw in here. This is a lot smaller than my Bossy Glamworks uh, poly mailer. And I got these on Amazon. But they have like all different kinds. So, um, 
they're really inexpensive but like i said it just depends on your budget i like to add just like a little flair to my packaging just to let my customers know you know i think you're special i took the time out to think about packaging and what i wanted on the outside of it and things like that so it's 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 up to you it is not required do i do it hell yes absolutely um especially the ones with my logo on it like that's a no-brainer okay next question should i purchase a paid shopify theme or use the free one i'm only talking to those who have shopify as their platform for their website if you're using wix or wordpress i don't know anything about that so just skip over this part if this does not apply to you should you or should you not buy a shopify theme is it required? Does it make you get more sales? No. <laughs> I have a free Shopify theme. Did not pay one dime for it. And at minimum, I do at least 20000 a month in sales. More than that, but as a baseline. So that that tells you right there, no, you do not need a fancy theme from shopify you can totally use the free ones that are on there they have several on there that'll get you started my only thing is as long as your website is neat it's easy to navigate um there are not a lot of pop-ups a lot of little annoying things that little spin the wheel get a discount thing um as long as it doesn't have like all of those kind of annoying things on it and everything is like well thought out and well put together, you know, you don't have to scramble and try to find things. It is perfectly okay to use a free Shopify theme. I promise you. And this next question is, is a very controversial. I mean, it ain't that deep, but to me, it's kind of controversial um, with COVID and everything. Do you wear your clothes to take pictures slash model in and then rewrap them and send them to your customers <laughs> i can't even believe that i'm having to answer this question at all but i will answer this question y'all come on now would you want something from another boutique they done went outside, they done sweat it all in it, they sprayed some Febreze up under the arms and they repackaged it and sent it to you. Would you really want to pay someone like $60 for a dress and then they wore it out and, you know, it has makeup stains or it smells like, you know, it has deodorant and shit on it? Come on now, that that that's a no-brainer. Don't do it. Do not do it. That's nasty, that's unclean. That's not fair to the person that's spending their hard-earned money with you in your boutique. It's in poor taste. And overall, you like you want to build a relationship with your customers because the goal is to keep having them come back over and over and over. So why would you put your customer through that? Let them have a good experience. You know, as the old saying goes, you only got one time. And it takes only one time for that one customer to get something that you have worn. They're going to go tell their family. They're going to go tell their friends. If you're running ads on Facebook, they're going to hop in them comments and be like, hey, don't order from her. You know, she sent me some shit that was worn. Like you're going to run your business into the ground before you even get it off the ground. So it's like it, it's not it is frowned upon in the boutique industry. Um, I personally don't know anyone that does that. Um, I don't, and I don't recommend that you do that either. So the next question is, should I do pre-orders to build my inventory? Okay, here's the thing. You can. This goes back to, you know, using the stock photos and asking your vendor, can you use their photos? Because clearly you don't have anything to model in to do the pre-orders in the first place. So you're going to need something to get started. Have I done it before? Yes. However, that is very, very risky. I will give you a perfect example. Let's say you found this beautiful dress and you know for sure that it's going to sell out. Okay. You've um, 
ask the vendor, can you use their stock photos? But you don't have the money. And they said, okay, or you actually just took the took the picture anyway. Um, let's say you got 100 orders for this one dress. Okay, so because you didn't have the money up front to buy the inventory. So you took a bunch of pre-orders. Okay, this could go either way. You could go back to that vendor and say, okay, hey, here's my money. Can you go ahead and send me 20 dresses? All right, cool. Very easy. You send the customers their stuff. You know, you've already given them a ship date. And that's the other thing. If you're going to do pre-orders, you need to let the customer know when their order is going to ship. You could say, you know, if something's going to come in from um, to the vendor when they get it in, let's say it comes in July 15th. Okay, I would space that out. I would go like two weeks ahead and say, hey, this dress is going to ship out the very end of July because that gives you a little bit of a buffer to get the dresses in, inspect them. If you want to go out and have your own photo shoot, you know, or whatever you want to do, um, that will give you enough time to package the orders, the orders and get them out, you know, in a timely manner. However, let's say you got, again, you got, a lot of orders for um, a particular dress and you got the money and you go back to the vendor that dress could be gone so not only did you take these people's money but then you got to turn around and give them you got to give all of them their money back because if you don't your boutique already going down the drain because you're dishonest I don't think it, it, it's it's a honest thing to do personally but if you have a good relationship with your vendor and you know they don't sell out often or they'll you know maybe even set some aside for you you gotta you gotta like build that relationship with your vendor you gotta know i know some of them um as soon as they put something out if you sleep on it and you go back the next day that shit could be gone because like i said Mostly all of us are shopping from the same vendors. So you kind of got to act fast on that. Have I done pre-orders before? Yes, but it was in an instance to where I had, I built that relationship with my vendor. So they were able to say, okay, Stacy, you know, our inventory is getting low. You need to go ahead and place your order. And I'm like, okay, cool. Here you go. But once you're established and, you know, you've got enough revenue coming in, you really don't need to do that. I personally wouldn't do it. Um, I started in August of 2020 and it is now May 2021. And I don't I don't do that no more because that happened to me one time where, you know, I still had a good relationship with my vendor. But when I went back to purchase the dresses, like they were already gone. And so I had to give a lot of money back to a lot of customers. And I'm sure I lost some along the way. But like I said, that was when I first started. You live and you learn. So should you do pre-orders or not to get your inventory up? I would just say save the money. It, it's not worth the headache of knowing if your vendor is going to have that particular item in stock when you're ready to purchase it. And it's, it's really risky. It's a gamble. But if you're going to do it, make sure you have a, a really nice relationship with your vendor so they can keep you in the loop and you know keep you informed on when the inventory is going low on their end. And I'm going to wrap this video up with our final question. Should I, meaning you, this is the question, should I do a regular backdrop for my boutique or should I take my photos outside? The decision is yours. I know when I first started out, I literally built a whole photography studio in my home and it was really convenient to just go in my bathroom change the clothes change out the accessories lipstick or whatever and go back and shoot those photos it is very convenient it really is it just depends on what type of aesthetic you want for your website and how you want it to look i know initially when i first started i started with a brown like a tan backdrop i hated it i I was like, no, I don't like this. So I went and got an all white backdrop. So that gives you that nice clean finish, like a, 
I don't know, like Nordstrom's or a department store. Like if you're shopping online, you've got that clean white background in the back. You could totally do that. Um, and it's very convenient because like I said, if you're doing this at, at your home or if you're going to a photography studio, you can bring all of your clothes and you can just go back and forth and change. Or you can do what I call lifestyle um, photos to where you go out, you know, in a, a busy area where there's like restaurants and shopping areas and things like that. You can very well take your pictures there as well. But the, the only thing that, that I don't like, and I'm just going to explain it from my my point of view, what a typical photo shoot day for me would look like because I completely changed my website from the plain backdrop i wanted to start doing my photos outside i thought that it would add a little bit more character and help me establish my identity my brand if you will i like it better but it's it's a lot of work y'all um so if you don't if you have a full-time job or you know if you you're a mother and you've got kids and you've got certain deadlines to meet it probably would be better if you just took the photos like around your house if you're going to do a lifestyle shoot or you could, you know, purchase the backdrop um, option from, you, know, you can get it from like Amazon, I think, and um, do the photos yourself. Um, like I said, I started out with just the backdrop, but then I changed over to the lifestyle images as I got busier. Um, I just didn't have time to take the pictures anymore. So it was just more convenient for me to meet with my photographer and take them outside. So what I normally do is if I'm, we shoot on a particular day of the week, I'll wake up and I'll, you know, I'll do my makeup. I'll steam all of the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'll steam all of the clothes that I'm going to wear that day. And I, I got to have all my purses, my accessories, earrings, uh, lipstick changes, I've got to plan all that out because I'm not going to be able to go in and out of a restroom to, you know, change clothes. So we go to a busy area, you know, where there's restaurants or shopping, things like that, because you want to get a good, you know, lifestyle theme going in the background or whatever. So I'm already dressed in one of the outfits. So we're ready to shoot as soon as I arrive. So I shoot, 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 photo, photo. I got to go back to my car, look around, <laughs> see if anybody's watching, take my clothes off, put the other outfit on, you know, get the pants on. It, this is all in the car. Then you got to run back out, do the photos, and you just repeat the process. So after about the fourth or fifth outfit, I am tired. You know what I'm saying? There's only so much ducking and dodging you can do in a parking lot. Like, you have to get up really early too to get these pictures done because most people, you know, will be at work. And I'm talking about during the week. Most people will be at work. So it, it knock on wood, it hasn't really been an issue for me yet because we get up pretty early and we get the pictures done. Um, and there's nobody really gawking or staring. I know, you know, some people may be uncomfortable with that. People are going to look at you. They are going to look like they have never seen anybody on the street taking a picture before. It is so annoying, but I've been doing it for so long now. I'm actually used to people staring. But if you like Monday through Friday, if you get up early enough, you can get the photos done and not have um, as many people <laughs> looking at you. Like a lot of people are going to be at work during those hours. And the pictures come out really gorgeous and it's so worth that extra effort. But you have to think about long term, are you going to be able to keep all of that up? Because it, it, it can be a lot. Like when shoot day comes around, I'm like, oh, but you know, you, you got to do it. It's something that needs to be done. Or you could do the, um, like I said, you could do the backdrop option. So just think about your needs. Think about your lifestyle. Um what what is more convenient for you i think it's more convenient for me because this is all that i do you know bossy glam works 100 percent. this is this is my job so a part of my job is to take all of my clothes and pack them up and go out on location and shoot my photos so i i just think it just adds a little bit more character um but you can always design your own backdrop in your home I mean, there's so many different ways that that this conversation could go on and on as far as pros and cons. So um, hopefully my answers have helped you some in some form or fashion along your boutique journey. 
Um, I do one-on-one -on -one consulting. If you guys have any questions at all, you can reach out to me, Stacy at bossyglamconsulting.com. If you want to know about pricing as far as, um, you know, how to build your social media, I can build your Shopify store. I can show you how to do Facebook ads. All of that information on there is going to be on the website, excuse me. And that's www.bossyglamconsulting.com. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me. Please like, please subscribe, and thanks for watching.